that one that one's the probably the most inconvenient one in my opinion <laughs> when I first was getting started in command line I was a little bit confused about this is actually the most helpful command that you could possibly use in your terminal especially if you are new hello everybody welcome and or welcome back to my channel so my last video was my cybersecurity Q&A, which is doing so, so well. I'm so glad that so many of you got some useful information out of that video. One of the questions that I answered was regarding what I wish I would have known prior into joining cybersecurity or just like getting into the program. And my answer for that was learning how to navigate a command line interface competently. This is for my Mac users today, Mac and Linux users. I'm going to give you a quick little tour of terminal and give you some of the basic commands that you can use to start using your terminal more regularly and just navigating it more confidently. On Mac and Linux, terminal is referred to as bash. That is what we use to execute commands, run scripts, see what folder you're in. There's really just so many possibilities. Terminal gives you a lot of flexibility to access your operating system directly and just do literally anything you want to. You can make a website, you can run programs. Again, there's so much you can do. I think that learning Terminal is beneficial for anybody in IT, whether you're a programmer or if you're in cybersecurity. Honestly, even if you're just a regular computer user, I still think that it's extremely beneficial to know how to navigate this, even if it's just the basics. I really want to make this an entire series where I go through how to do scripting, I want to go through how to write basic programs, I want to go through access controls, and just tons of other things. That way you guys can get more familiar with Terminal and learn some of the functionalities and capabilities that it has. So without further ado, let's get started with the basics and let's go open our Terminal. So to begin, we're going to open up Terminal which is pretty easy to find. You can either go to your launch pad, which is the little rocket ship in the bottom left-hand corner. Um, a really cool gesture you can use is by taking your entire hand and closing and doing one of these <laughs> on your trackpad, and that'll also take you to where all of your applications are. For some reason, my terminal is in this cluster of an other folder. My favorite way to bring up terminal, because I normally have to just bring it up quickly, find some information and then keep working, is to hit command spacebar and then type in terminal. And that'll open it. Pretty simple. So my preferences opened right away because I wasn't sure if I wanted to include this in the video, but you can actually change the color, what it looks like, your text, you can change the font that your terminal uses. You can customize it a lot so that it works best for you but um, less important, so I'm not gonna spend five minutes talking about why I would rather have pink text. Anyways, the first command that I would say would be very, very useful to know is PWD, which stands for Print Working Directory. So right now, if I were to type in PWD, press enter, it's gonna tell me that I'm in my Rebecca folder under users. <laughs> I should have probably changed my name, but most of my devices are named Rebecca. You'll see this in multiple tutorials. I normally have my username as Rebecca or whatever. In order to see what all is in that directory, again, a directory is kind of just like a folder. Um, it, it is, it's a folder. It's basically just like a fancy name for a folder. This is also something that when I first was getting started in command line, I was a little bit confused about, but a directory is basically just a folder. It's nothing more than that. It's literally just a folder. So in order to see what is inside of your folder, you can use the ls command, which stands for list. So if I type ls, you can see all of the directories or all of the folders that are in the Rebecca folder. <laughs> or Rebecca directory. I'm gonna stick with the word directory just cause it's more correct. So right now you can see that I have tons of junk that I should probably get rid of on my desktop. But how do I see that in a command line interface? Right here from my last command, I can see that there is a directory called desktop. In order for me to get there, I could just type in CD desktop and boom, we're in the desktop. <laughs> In order to see what's on my desktop, once again, I would type ls and it's going to list everything. I have tons of screenshots from labs because most of our labs we have to screenshot to prove that we're like doing the work. In order to get a little bit more information about what is in your directory, you can do ls-l, which stands for long, and let's see, there we go, now we have 
the person who created it, I believe this is just who has access to it, or the work group, the date it was created, the privileges, which I'm really, really excited to do the video on access control because I think that's probably the most exciting. Okay, it's not the most exciting, but it's, it's pretty cool. <laughs> I didn't explain it, but your command line will get cluttered real fast. You can always type the word clear and press enter, and it'll completely clear your terminal and start you with a fresh page. That way it's not stressful to look at. <laughs> I am, again, still in my desktop, but let's say I want to go back to my Rebecca folder that we were in earlier. What I can do is I can type in CD for change directory, and then I can type two dots. So two dots is going to bring me back to my Rebecca directory. We can confirm this by typing pwd print working directory and there we can see that we're back so next we're going to navigate over to my documents folder so what i did is i just typed in ls again just to confirm that it's there i can see the documents directory right there on my screen so i'm going to type in cd documents so i decided to clear my terminal one more time and just list all of the things in my documents directory and next i want to show you how you can make a directory and or make a folder for my visual learners i'm also going to open up a finder window so you can see the directory being made simultaneously so this is my documents folder. This is where I organize all of my schoolwork that is happening that given semester. I'm going to go ahead and type MKDIR, which stands for make directory, and we're gonna call this test. As you can see, my test directory immediately popped up on the right hand side over here. So now I could go inside and make more directories. I could make files. I can do whatever I want. Um, let's navigate into our new folder. So to do that again, CD, test, and now if I do LS, there is nothing inside of it, so it's just gonna bring me right back to where we started. As important as it is to make directories, sometimes you might also want to delete a directory, and that's also pretty simple. The remove command is just RM. You can remove a file like this, you can remove a directory like this, but let's take a look at what it looks like to remove a directory. I'm going to go back one. I can type in RMDIR for remove directory. I'm gonna write test because that is the one that we don't want. And again, on the right hand side, it just disappeared. For me, having my finder window open and seeing it pop up and seeing it go away kind of helped me understand what was going on in this terminal environment. Because I think that's the hardest part is that we wanna, at least for me, I'm a visual learner, so I wanna see what's going on. And I don't think that terminal kind of gives you the flexibility to do that, obviously that's the benefit of having a GUI, but it is so important to be able to navigate a terminal environment. So sometimes it's good to just open a finder and see what you're creating as you're creating it, just so you can understand what's going on behind the scenes. Next, I wanna take a look at some text editors. I'm just gonna take a look at two, um, Nano and Vim, because I, y'all, it was a struggle. I know it's pretty simple, but let me tell you, it was a struggle, especially when you're just thrown into a lab and they're like, hey, write a script using the Nano text editor. And I'm like, what's a Nano text editor? <laughs> So first, I'm going to go ahead and recreate that test directory that we just deleted, just so I have a place to put all of my new files. One thing that you can do is you can use the up arrow to go back to old commands that you typed in. So if I press the up arrow a couple of times, we can see our make directory test command that we used a while ago. Press enter. Again, it popped up again on the right hand side over here. I'm going to open up my test folder so that when I save or write the file, it'll pop up on this screen over here. And let's start with Vim because that one, that one's the, probably the most inconvenient one in my opinion. <laughs> so if I type in vi, which is the command that you would use to access that editor, and let's just say, let's do rebecca.txt, this is it. This is Vim. You can do so many things in here. Like I said, my next couple of videos, I wanna show you guys how to write some simple programs. So if you do know some programming, it's gonna be so easy to translate those skills into this environment. I'm gonna show you guys how to write some scripts, maybe some like baby Trojan horses um, to mess with access controls. Just tons of really fun stuff um, that you can do. But for today, we're gonna write a sentence. <laughs> I'm gonna press the I button for insert, otherwise it will not let you type. And I'm just gonna say, hey, what's up? 
How you doing? Cool, right? So that's done. Here's the dumb part. <laughs> Nano editor is my preferred editor because I just feel like it's so much more simple. It's not that big of a difference, but like I prefer it personally to... <laughs> It's just so dumb. To get out of this, so we're done writing, right? Like, let's say I want to quit and get out of this document. There is no clear way to get out of it unless you like Google or know beforehand what you should do. So what you would do is you'd press escape and then you can see that the insert text went away. Um, you would type in colon and Q and that would just quit. But because I did write something to the file, I'm not just quitting something I just created. It's gonna say, hey, like you didn't save what you wrote down. If you wanna do that, you have to add an explanation point. So if I wanted to quit this file without saving any of the information, I would type in colon Q explanation point. And that would completely quit without saving. Because I do wanna save what I wrote, I'm instead going to write WQ, which stands for write and then quit. So now if I do that, I can now hit ls and I can see that there is rebecca.txt. I did not put it in the test folder on accident, but if I do move over to documents, you can see right there is the rebecca.txt. Simple enough, let's actually move into our test directory by doing cd test. And this time we're going to use the nano text editor. So n-a-n-o and then rebecca, so I'm going to do 2.txt. And there we go, there is another text editor. I'm gonna say, hey, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> now, this one is a lot easier because it gives you the commands that you would need to write, quit, search, all at the bottom. It's so much nicer to use. So in my personal opinion, I would say just use nano because it's a lot more user friendly. For me to write, we can see at the bottom that it's control O to write out. So I'm gonna hit control O. It's asking me write file to name rebecca2.txt. I'm gonna hit enter. There we go, the file just popped up. And now for me to exit, I can just hit control X and I'm out of there. I feel like that was a much nicer experience. <laughs> that is pretty much it. I feel like that is a really great start into creating some familiarity and just getting a little bit more comfortable in navigating your terminal. I highly, highly recommend that you just play around, like just navigate, try to get to different places, create some directories, remove some directories, do some simple things just so you can get some experience in that environment because I promise you that if you are studying cybersecurity, you're gonna spend a lot of time I mean a lot of time in this environment. I know I said the text editors would be the last thing, but this is actually the most helpful command that you could possibly use in your terminal, especially if you are new, and that is the man command. I think it stands for manual. I should have Googled that before making this video, but I'm pretty sure it stands for manual. So what you can do with the man command is you could type in man, you could type in cd for a change directory, and it'll show you how you could use that command. And this it does this for every single command that exists in the world, which is amazing. So for example, I could type in man cd, and it's gonna bring up a whole beautiful manual on how to use the man command, all the options you can use, all of the arguments you can use. It is a beautiful thing. It has got me through a lot. And just to get out of it, you can either hit control C or Q, it just depends. I've seen both work depending on what operating system you're on, but that is the biggest, biggest blessing that that exists. Um, read the documentation. I know that's like the most unpopular thing that I could say, but read the documentation, learn how these tools work so you can use them more effectively. And yeah, enjoy exploring terminal. All right, that is it for today's video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope somebody learned something new or I encourage someone to maybe dive into their terminal. I'll hopefully do a version of this for PowerShell as well. Um, which is just Windows version of Terminal or the command line interface. I am not really a Windows user. I definitely prefer to use my Mac over anything else, but I am gonna be at a job where Windows is the primary system, operating system that we are working on. So I'll probably have much more content related to Windows coming out very, very soon. If you don't already, make sure to follow me on Instagram at Rebecca J. Richard. I post all my stories there a ton. I love talking to you guys in my DMs and I'm getting a lot better at responding a lot faster. So I will see you guys very, very soon, either on Instagram or in my next video. Until next time, bye.